Welcome, in this video, I am going to show you how to factor binomials. So this is part two of my series. If you need a little bit help on understanding what factoring is, go back and watch part one, which was just focusing on the monomial. But with the binomial, it starts to get a little confusing because typically students don't have too much of a trouble understanding factoring a number like eight. They recognize that, all right, if I wanted to factor this, I could just rewrite that as a product. And there it is, it's factored. But how can I rewrite 3x plus 9 as a product? So the idea is exactly the same. If you think about breaking down 8, how did you break down 8 into 4 times 2? Well, what you did is you found a number that evenly divided into 8. And let's say you found that number to be 4. Well, 4 evenly divides an 8 two times, right? We can rewrite this product as a division problem. 8 divided by 4 equals 2. So if we want to understand how we can break apart 3x plus 9 into a product, we need to understand, well, how could we maybe divide something into 3x plus 9? Because if we can divide something into it, meaning we can rewrite it as a division problem, then that means we can also rewrite it as a multiplication problem. So typically when we're looking at the 3x, or the that becomes a little difficult as far as what divides into it. But let's look at 9. And if I wanted to think about it, let's just look at the numbers. And if you look at the numbers, you recognize that a number that divides into 9 and divides into 3 would be 3, right? They both then divide into both of those. So what I'm going to do is, what about if we divided the 3x plus 9 both into 3? So again, that would be 3x divided by 3 plus 9 divided by 3. So this 3 is going to divide into both those terms. Now what happens when we do that? Well, 3x divided by 3 just gives us x, and then 9 divided by 3 gives us a positive 3. So when I took 3 and I divided it into this, right, just like 4, I got this answer. Now again, can we rewrite this as a product? So x plus 3 times what gives you 3x plus 9? Well, again, what is that? It's 3, right? And again, double check your work. That's the great thing about factoring. If you multiply this back out, 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 3 is going to be 9. So you can see that the product or the factored form of 3x plus 9 is going to be 3 times x plus 3. So when you want to identify, when you want to factor a binomial, the best thing you can do is find a common factor of both of those terms. So the common factor of 3x and 9 was just the number 3. And you divide both of the terms by that common factor. And then, but again, don't forget, a lot of students will divide it out and they get x plus 3. But again, remember our goal here is to rewrite the expression as a product. It's not just to divide, right? You got to take that quotient and multiply it by the number you factored out. So let's look at the next example. We know it's going to be also be divisible by 3, right? Because it's the same 3 and 9. But now we want to look at some variables. And in this case, you can see that the they both share the variable x. So I'm going to try dividing out a factor of 3x. Now again, technically what I'm doing is I am dividing a 3x by both of these terms. So sometimes you might just want to think 3x times what gives me a 3x squared? Well, that's going to be x. 3x times what gives me a 9x? That's going to be a positive 3. So instead of sometimes doing division, which you could do, you could do it the exact same process that I did in the last one, is just divide everything by 3x. 3x squared divided by 3x is 3. 9x, I'm sorry, that's just going to be a x, right? And then 9x divided by 3 is going to be a positive 3. The problem I don't like about this method is because people will find the quotient and they'll forget to take the quotient and rewrite it in product form. Because again, that's what the question is, right? I'm asking you to factor this form. Um, or to write it in factored form. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just find the common um, factor and then divide it out and saying, all right, 3x times what gives me um, 3x squared? Well, that's x. 3x times what gives me 9x? And that's going to be a positive 3. Now, this next example, you can see that they don't share any common numbers in this case. So I'm going to just look at this and say, all right, the greatest common factor between both of these two terms is going to be a y, right? So I'm going to divide out a y from both terms. So when I divide out a y on both terms, all right, I'm going to be left with a y cubed divided by y, which is y squared, and a negative 9y divided by y, which is just going to leave me with a negative 9. 
Now, in this case, you recognize that again, I still have a binomial and maybe I should be able to further factor this down, right? Because if you remember in our last part for monomials, we wanna break this down into our linear factors. We wanna break this down into the prime factors of our polynomial. And one thing hopefully you recognize in this case is this is a what we call a difference of two squares. So whenever you have a squared term minus another squared term, you can apply the difference of two squares. And the difference of two squares says a squared minus b squared is a minus b times a plus b. So that is going to be your factored form. And again, that only works when you have a square term minus another square term. So therefore, now I can rewrite this as y minus 3 times y plus 3. The last one is you recognize there is nothing absolutely in common that these have. However, I recognize this is a cubed minus another cubed. So like when we had a difference or a square minus another square, there is a difference of two cubed. And in this case, the formula is very similar, but again, we're not gonna multiply by a squared minus b squared because if you were to multiply that out, it wouldn't work. But the difference of two cubes basically gives us this a squared plus ab plus b squared. So in this case, the factored form is just going to be x minus y times x squared minus xy, sorry, plus xy plus y squared. Okay, so again, looking at factoring binomials, you're trying to factor out the common term or you're dividing out that common term. Just remember when you're dividing, you can rewrite every division problem as a product. And that is the idea of factoring, rewriting your expression as a product. When you have square terms minus square terms, there's nothing you can factor out. There's nothing that they have in common. Look to the difference of two squares as well as to the difference of two cubes. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is factoring binomials. In the next video, I will show you how to factor trinomials. I'll see you there. Cheers.